guess at least you're getting back to the point where you can start to look at fundamentals, and that's good news. Uh, what, what happened? Uh, I, th I think you're in a liquidation phase. I think Kirsten had it exactly right. I think there's a bunch of wrong-footed moves by uh, Hank Paulson uh, and the Illuminati of, of the country, if you will. And I think we're paying for it right now. And the Illuminati of, of the country, if you will. And I think we're paying for it right now. Goldman can be the first to rally hard enough to fix itself. I call it a virtuous circle that makes the stock even more attractive. Oh, by the way, I am part, just like when I always play with an open hand, I am part of the powerful cabal of ex-Goldman Associates that controls the world, along with the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and of course the Queen of England, not to say uh, the Bavarian Illuminati, Illuminati, Illuminati. America, in this period, when really a new world order can be created, it's a great opportunity that isn't such a crisis will be to develop an overall strategy for America. Talked about before, I mean, you've got huge wage disparities. I don't know how that inevitably resolves itself. Um, it may resolve itself in some type of a, of a global currency crisis. And then if the global currency crisis unfolds, then inevitably you get, uh, I guess, an alignment under a, a global world government, uh, a new global currency, um, and a new world order. Uh, so... We economic hitmen really have been the ones responsible for creating this first truly global empire. And we work many different ways. But perhaps the most common is that we will identify a, a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, industrial parks, ports, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, in addition to our corporations, but really don't help the majority of the people at all. However, those people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt. It's such a big debt they can't repay it, and that's part of the plan that they can't repay it. And so at some point, we economic hitmen go back to them and say, listen, you lost a lot of money, can't pay your debts, so sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies. Allow us to build a military base in your country or send troops in support of ours to some place in the world like Iraq or vote with us on the next UN vote to have their electric utility company privatized and their water and sewage system privatized and sold to U.S. corporations or other multinational corporations. So there was that whole mushrooming thing and it's so typical of the way the IMF and the World Bank work that you put a country in debt, it's such a big debt it can't pay it, and then you offer to refinance that debt and, and, and pay even more interest. And you demand this quid pro quo, which you call a conditionality or good governance, which means basically that they've got to sell off their resources, in, in, including many of their social services, their utility companies, their school systems sometimes, their, their, their penal systems, their insurance systems, to foreign corporations. So it's a, it's a double, triple, quadruple point. ...about when you met Rockefeller, how it happened in these discussions. I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew, who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I made a video called Mad as Hell, and uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me. I knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him, and I liked him, and uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts. And uh, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event Never told me what the event was going to be, but there was going to be an event, and out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq, you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the New World Order, and we'd go after Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, sure enough, later, 9-11 happened, and I remember he was telling me how <laughs> how are you going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places and, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror of which there's no real enemy 
and the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. He told you it was going to be a hoax. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no question. He says, this, this, we weren't terror. He's laughing. There's no... <laughs> Who are we fighting? I mean, why do you think 9-11 happened and then nothing's happened since then? Do you think that our security is so great here that these people who pulled off 9-11 were able to can't knock down another plane? Come on, it's ridiculous. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this, war, this endless war on terror. And that's why we, and that was the first lie. And the next lie was going into Iraq, you know, uh, to uh, get Saddam Hussein out with his weapons of mass destruction. That was the next lie. Now, now specifically, this was a little over six years ago? This was... Uh, 11 months before 9-11. Yeah. And Nick Rockefeller, he's a lawyer, he is, he, he's become your friend over the previous years. And he's saying to you that there's going to be this big event, and then out of that we're going to have a war on terror, and it's just going to go on and on. Right, an endless war on terror without, without any real enemy. That you can never, so you can never define a winner. And, and uh, did he say that it's going to be perfect because you can't define an enemy? It just goes yeah, because on on. you can't define a winner. There's no one who's going to beat, so it goes on and on forever. And they can do whatever they want. They scare the hell out of the American public. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Let's but the just... truth, but the truth has to be, the truth has to come out. That's why I'm doing this interview. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. Yet yeah, there's a war going on in Iraq because we invaded Iraq. And people over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, that's a joke, you know. And until we discover what really happened on 9-11, and who was responsible for 9-11, because that's where the war on terror emanates from. That's where it comes from. It was not, and I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're gonna see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all this coming from. And as much as I like you, Nick, you know, your ways and my ways were the, were the opposite side of the fence. You know, I don't believe in enslaving people.